Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the after show. Uh, man, I had a ridiculous day at work. So, I do apologize if I sound completely exhausted. <laughs> It's because I am. It's because I am. It's like three people didn't show up, so I just kind of have to do everything myself. As you do. Let's drop the link. See if anyone wants to come on to the show. Now, I am hoping. Uh, yes, okay, he's here. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna have Jonathan jump on to talk to me about the Blanc Ponds. The Blanc Ponds. Yeah. Wow. Hey, what's up, Matthew Egan? Love the new photograph. Anthony. Now, I'm not sure who you refer to as Roten 1 and 2. Tommy, thank you for reminding everyone to like, comment, subscribe. Guys, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Uh, got Logan Hall. Hello. Ooh, and Anthony says it was pretty warm here in New York City today. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the hottest day. Nobody shows up to work. So I have to do everything by myself. I thought, I thought I'm going to die. That's how... That's how bad the work was today. But, you know, uh, I'm leaving New York City soon. Uh, going, to Bar going to Barcelona. To Barcelona for like uh, 11 days, I think. 11 days. So I'm hoping to shoot some footage, uh, do some live streams from the hotel room. I'm just bringing my iPad with me. So I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But. Hopefully everything's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna have a little bit of Hennessy. Uh, wait, never mind. My wife took it yesterday, so I'm just gonna have to drink this uh, Bombay Sapphire dried gin, just just raw. Jeez, it is what it is, guys. It is like Satan's asshole outside. Cheers, everybody. Ooh, Alex, Tim, will you stop by Los Angeles area when you visit California? I sure will try. I sure will try. By the way, I was actually, the plan was almost to go to some California city. But in the last second, we changed our minds because we had to get the Barcelona out of the way. Those uh, got any tonic water to go with the gin? No, I don't have anything. I just have diluted Pepsi. So I'm just going to drink it. Just going to drink it raw. Oh, it tastes awful. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Tovarish. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Oh my God! All kind, what well, I had to, I put you through a lot of troubles. I'm sorry. It's like three o'clock in the morning over there in Germany. Yes, it is. Wowzers! And I and I couldn't tell you whether I'm gonna do the show or not do the show. I gotta be honest. Sorry, man. This is is just just the nature of this of the show. All good, my man. All good. Hey, but you're so, so listen, cool. Tim. Yes. Listen, Tim. I have that theory. Yes. Um, my theory is you wanted someone with a sexy German accent on the show, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. couldn't get Jenny L because she was too expensive. Jenny L. I'll get her someday. Don't worry about it. I, we have to, I have to work my way up the ladder. Oh, up the celebrity that's very ladder. flattering. So thank you very yeah. much. 
<laughs> Hello, know, Mr. Can, GMT. <laughs> you know, now I can message her and I can say, hey, Jenny, I had this German gentleman and, uh, you know, we are very fond of you and we're going to, you know, want to talk to you about watches. Why don't you come on the show? <laughs> You know? Why not? <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, I actually, I today was like the worst day because also ID guy was doing a show. And man, I was at work. I, I was hoping I couldn't, I couldn't, because uh, I, I was going to try to hop on the ID guys. You know, maybe not even, not, not hop on the show, but I don't know. Maybe send him a couple of messages, you know, just chit chat with him. But because Mr. GMT has, uh, you know, kind of a smooth, you know, pre prepared the soil for us uh, to do a little bit of communication. So, but man, because of the work disaster, I couldn't. Mm. But Jonathan, now, do you want to talk? about the blanc pan if that's okay for you i'd uh, i'd happily do that yeah yes yes let's do you do have it. the pictures ready well see it look i have i have the, the two hodinky articles pulled up here mm -hmm. i can actually put them side by side so at first i must apologize and uh, put myself into shame because in a previous show i said uh, there have been three hodinky editions uh, uh, which is totally wrong, uh, because Hardinki, uh, Hardinki <laughs> genius marketing marketed the one on the left on your screen, mm -hmm. just uh, uh, looking like a Hardinki edition, but it wasn't. It was actually a Blampa edition that they were promoting and pushing uh, and uh, doing. So, so it's only they, yeah. So once they so Forest Hardinki. Uh, created a, an addition, kind of had to work with them, and then based on that experience of work, they figured like we don't know, we no longer need you guys. We'll do a, uh, like a re-edition of our own. Is that is that correct? I I wouldn't say it like that because um, Blancpain actually did some limited editions on uh, based on the Fifty Fathoms before and after. They're they're always doing that. Um, because mm -hmm. they make uh, the best money out of uh, the 50 fathoms th uh, that they can. Mm. So now, there are various is... uh, limited so what was editions. The, what was like a, a limited edition before before the Hodinki one? Um, actually, they um, um, they did um, the the mill spec, but uh, with a larger case and okay. with, a di uh, with a date in in twenty seventeen. Uh huh. Okay. And they're doing uh, the the Batiscaf and uh, all all those models in limited uh, variants of of dial colors and dial configurations and so on. So um, limited editions based on the fifty fathoms are not super rare. Um, super interesting are the mill spec, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is. Um, the Hodinki um, edition that we're talking today. Mm. And uh, there was a mill spec uh, edition, not by Hodinki, in 2017 in the larger case and with the date uh, with a different movement, uh, which I don't find too interesting because it's a 45 millimeter case. Oh, that's too big. 45 millimeter case. What were they thinking? It depends a little bit uh, where you're starting. So the original 50 Fathoms, um, it yeah. was developed in, in um, 1953 okay. um, uh, or 52 and came out in uh, 1953. Um, it was 42 millimeters back then. Okay. And that's oh. uh, quite big. But the new the new ones they're both forty point three millimeters. The Hodinki was Hodinki. forty forty point three millimeter. Um, mm -hmm. uh, also, that uh, limited edition that you have on the left with the no rat dial, not uh, yes. no radium dial, 
Um, those both are 40.3 millimeters, which is, in my opinion, perfectly wearable and uh, comparable to a Submariner five digits. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would even say the the six digit, the ceramic. Would you say that this yeah. is this is probably even better if it wasn't for the strap? You know, it's got the open case back movement. Uh, it's got the in-house caliber. Uh, yes, and yeah. and you could you could also put a, a metal strap on uh, in oyster style uh, directly uh, from from Blancpain. Mm. Uh, I think it's, it's not gonna look uh, good one. though. Ooh, check this out! Hist one three seven eight has become a staff writer. Hey Hist, thank you so much for subscribing to the Tim Wright live show. Please go to your uh, member benefits, click on the Discord. Oh, I think you might be even, yeah, and make sure that you join us on the Discord. Wanna see you Maybe, there? Tim, yeah. you, you could you could make some coupons for Archie Luxury's coffee blend maybe for I, new members. I'm actually working on it, I think. We're gonna, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we if we can't sell the coffee, We'll we'll use it as an incentive for something for something else. For example, I'll tell you this: there is a way to sell certain certain limited edition merchandise only with a coupon. So only if you have this special coupon, you can see the merchandise. Only only yeah. then you can buy it. It's incredible. So oh. only those people who purchased uh, RG Luxury. Uh, coffee blend will be able to purchase the limited edition merchandise. It's going to wow. be the coffee success. And I see an good, yeah. I'm working, I'm working an on a lot. Of Ethereum? <laughs> no, Imperium. Oh, Imperium. <laughs> it's not Imperium. <laughs> oh my God. It's so funny. Oh my God. But so, so, okay. So we're looking here, right? So, I mean, Let's see what a what a is this the same movement? Did they're both they both it's have in-house movement? Basic basically the same movement, but the one on the left has the date, so that's mm -hmm. why they call it the eleven fifty one, and uh, the other one I think is okay. eleven fifty three. But it's basically think, the same movement. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with these movements. I think. Uh, if anything, the Hodinki gave them the direction in which to go. Like they told them, "Hey guys, you have to make smaller watches. Don't make those ridiculous size watches. That's not, you know, it's not going to be popular." Yes, I, I think that's that's one of the trick. Uh, uh, one of the tricks that um, Hodinki really demanded a smaller case size. Because yeah. in my opinion, it, it looks much uh, much more balanced and much mm -hmm. better on the wrist, and uh, it fits the character of uh, the the tool watch uh, fifty fathoms pretty well. By mm -hmm. the way, do you do you know where the fifty fathoms terms comes from? I'm gonna find out in just a couple of seconds. Let me read this. Uh, you don't need to. This, this chat uh, you don't from... need to. I can explain. Let me no, explain. I, I, said, me explain. I said I'm gonna read this chat and then I'm gonna find out because you'll tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. How dare you, sir? Come on here and spread your lies about Hodinky. We need Marco on here to yell at you. <laughs> hey, welcome, Marco. That that sounds like another day at home for me. Somebody yelling at me. <laughs> look, look, Marco. Marco did write that he's pretty sure those movements with are with triple barrels in sequence with 120 hours of power reserve pretty freaking incredible i mean it could be incredible but i think the more barrels you have the more likely the movement is going to fail um, marco so unfortunately just... unfortunately yeah, hello marco I... good to see you hey jonathan hope you're well buddy so i'm having chips that's why i'm muted Oh, I'd love to have some chips, but I'm on a diet. So my, my wife was eating chips before. Horrible for me. I'm supposed to be too, to be fair. Can I just <laughs> point out that this gin without tonic is absolutely disgusting. 
<laughs> That's terrible. You're drinking it straight. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, it's just you know what? I'll just put it in inside. You're gonna vomit. Cover. You're gonna puke. Yeah, 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 don't do that. I'll, I'll just I'll just put it inside. Get the a coat. Yeah. yeah, get a coat. Yeah, there you go. Coat. There we go. May I res uh, May I reply to? Uh, it's like drinking gasoline or or nail varnish or oh. something like that. <laughs> May I reply to Marco Super Chat? Yes, yes, of course. Um, the the movement with the triple it's barrel. It's just regular chat is actually a larger movement which doesn't fit into the smaller 40 millimeter cases oh. so oh. um the the triple barrel movement is in the big 50 fathoms in the okay, 45 the millimeters, 45 uh -huh. and so 43 batis cuff yeah uh, 50 fathoms is 45 uh, basis calf, or how, how you call it in French, is 43, and it has the, the triple barrel as well. I thought the basis calf was 40. Huh. Hmm. That's they make some 40. The... Actually, they make some 40, if I'm not mistaken, but they also make the bigger size. I think you're right, yes. Yeah, I think um, uh, batis calf, uh, I, I know that there was a limited Hodinki edition that was the first one, that was th mm -hmm. uh, 38, but that has the double. Not sure, but let me check. But uh, but those also have four day power reserves, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes. One? Yes. Right, correct. So it's, yeah, yeah. 120 yeah, hours. So. What? Four or five days? What's 120? Yeah, yeah. It says days. four days. 100 hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and triple day, uh, triple barrel is uh, 120 or five days. Right. Interesting. Interesting. But triple barrel is bigger and uh, only in the in the larger movement doesn't fit in in the 40. 0.3 millimeter case. The only thing that sucks, though, well, what's good is they got the movement that fits in the smaller scale, the yeah. smaller case, which means they're probably going to produce, or hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, because you never know, they're hopefully going to produce a 50 fathoms and 40 mil, like serially produce it. Yeah. Because the regular 50 fathoms is just unwearable unless you're like Shaquille O'Neal, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I I agree. Well, not sure if you, if you caught the the beginning of the show. Um, the historic 50 fathoms back in 1953, it was 42 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to keep in, uh, that in mind if you criticize the 45 millimeter oh. of the yeah, current yeah. model. Right. Uh, Bill Ar Arkari says, Glass Hoot! <laughs> <laughs> CQ is an awesome diver that is not given enough credit. Actually, I think it gets too much credit than it deserves. It's be, I don't know. I've seen that watch. I gotta be honest, guys. I wasn't impressed. Danger Will Robinson. Can't you Uber Eats deliver some tonic? <laughs> <and lemon? laughs> Oh my god. That's so funny. Also, uh to your remote, Tim, is there a Dan Murphy's in New York? You know, I do have look, I don't know how the guy did it, but best. So I I have this location, right? And they do have a website, but I'm not I'm not sure how easy it is. Because you have to create a web like a account. You have to type in, and it's very complicated. So you can try it out, but it's a pain in the ass. I don't know how 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 the how Ari. Oh wait, wait, who's Ali? Ali. I don't know how Ali did it, but it worked. Uh, you are wrong. Lay off the weed, Tim. Man, I didn't even have the time to get on it today. Usually, I'm off from work at like two. Today it was like six fifty. Hello, Mr. GMT. Oh, he's still getting... Wait, is this Mr. GMT? Okay, we'll just... Whoa. Okay, just got to be careful. All right, all right, all right. Let's just go... Uh... <clears throat> Danger Will says, What's Zen reputation as a watchmaker like in Germany? And how do they rate against the German brands? It's a good question, Jonathan. Very good question. Um, Zen has a, a quite good reputation in, in certain circles. 
Um, actually, Sin, Sin uh, started as a kind of one-man show by the old Mr. Sin, who was a famous um, a military pilot, and he did all these military-style watches after World War II. And mm -hmm. his trick, uh, basically, he, he was the first one who was, uh, who was uh, closing out uh, the middleman. So he, he was getting rid of the middleman. He was only directly selling from his uh, shop uh, from Frankfurt. And he, was and the he first, did that quite first early. Movement. Pardon? He was the first movement watch, cutting out the middleman. <laughs> kind of, kind of. No, actually, um, he, um, he, he. Um, as far as I know, he he got some old cases from from Hoyer or from Brightly. No, I think Brightling it was, and mm. uh, he put them together um, uh, with uh, with purchased movements and then sold them for an unbeatable price. And they all had that navy timer, old navy timer uh, appeal. Um, so that made him famous. And then he had a sales manager who came from IWC. And I think this guy took over the company um, after Mr. Sin then retired. And they're still doing that direct uh, business combined with, uh, with a couple of stores where, where you can try on your Sin and uh, buy it directly. That's pretty cool. Wow. It, it, is, it is a kind of a no like in a way right or no kind of like um he, he doesn't have his own movements um, yeah so. no. what well you know what movements are i think are a little bit overrated yeah but um actually um sin ha has created some some interesting features they um, um they did a kind of um um dehumid dehumidifying um, cartridge inside of the case um, that gets rid of all humidity which is possibly in, in a watch case and that has to be replaced every three or four years but uh, it's a very interesting technology and quite uh, unique and neat and I think they're still doing that interesting dear artifact says Tim if uh it's as if blank pan doesn't want to make money in any meaningful way severely limiting the few models people actually want makes no sense barracuda and no rad now actually this is the topic this, this was this was my kind of criticism actually uh my my thinking was is that they don't know what the hell they're doing the blank pond i don't know who is running the company but though, but they're lost they're completely Careful. lost Careful. right the the marketing team the design team man they're somewhere on the on the 6 month hike or like a 3 year hike or i don't know what the hell they're doing there's no one there it, it's just the, the whole place is running wild they're making watches that nobody wants and then when they're approached by like Houdinki and they say, hey, look, guys, this is the kind of watches that people want. They, uh, they, 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 what they do is they make only a couple of them. It makes no sense. So my criticism of this thing was that, first of all, there's no radiation and there's no, uh, what's it called? What is this thing called? Uh, mil spec. The mil spec. I thought this is a gimmick. Gimmick. Yes, I you know back in the past, it it had the function right. The, the mil spec let you know whether there was moisture inside the, the case, right? So you can you know refinish it. And there's no radiation. Like, of course, there's no radiation. I think it's against the law to have radiation nowadays. Oh, it's right? just cool though, Tim, to have that. On yeah, the yeah, it's cool. You know, it's just. It's it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick, you know. Uh, I understand. I do under. And you know, it's also. Uh, I think, it's kind of like, Omega, releasing three to one movement, right? What are they doing? They saw that the three oh, to one, terrible. right? The yeah. three to one started going crazy on the secondary market. So what did they do? They release a brand new one, and they they 
price it at the exact same price point that the vintage ones are going for. Oh, that's not my criticism of it. My yeah, criticism no, no. of it is I want it to be mass produced. This way I can buy yeah. one. Well, not that's only it. No, 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 no. <laughs> but they they chose the pricing specifically to undercut the 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 vintage market. Think about it. It's a strategic. This is like it's not because like they didn't choose that price because it was that difficult to make the watch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Well, Tim, there's actually that's no, that's not a fair criticism, Tim. There's very few watchmakers who can work on it in Omega. I think there's only it's like a workshop. There's a dedicated workshop. I specific. know, but no, no, no. I I understand, but that price, you can't tell me that it was a, just a coincidence that they chose. Well, Tim, the there's a lot of factors price. that go into pricing. I know, but the the one factor was it was the the fu. There was the fu to the three to one vintage collectors. Hello, Mr. GMT. Boys, boys, boys! How's it going, my three yeah. favorite boys? What's I happening? You, you hey, Mr. T. T. Yes, I gotta tell you, I think my main criticism with the three, two, one—if we're gonna stay on this topic, we can get back it's to the in a second—is yes. one they don't mass produce the three, two, one, which I wish they did. And then the other thing is—is is I don't think that's a fair point, Tim. I think they did it more to price I think, it in competition Marco, with the Marco. Daytona. Don't you think that they're not mass producing it as a way in order as a, like like it, it, they're not mass producing it because they want to have a justification for its price. They they don't want to be blamed that oh like they invented a fake kind of a uh, well, no, it's a pretty complicated movement, Tim. That's the Lamagna 2310 at Bosch. That's what they use in the corner of Bosch. They it's use Omega, it's dude. They have too. master watchmakers. Are you <laughs> that, kidding me? Omega? I love Come them. on, <laughs> man. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, Marco, your criticism is like, do you know <laughs> Omega? Thinks, oh, you just put this you're part in, you put that in. You do this, Marco, that, you're like, that. they're fucking <laughs> idiots. They don't know how to do this shit. They only That's got like a couple of smart guys. It's not Rolex, right? Your criticism is that they're fucking morons out there in Omega. No, I'm saying that it's not an easy movement to work on. That's what No, I'm but saying. if it's not an easy movement to work on, that means that they don't have enough skilled uh, watchmakers to work on them, right? Well, because Omega is not a high horology brand, right? They mass, yeah, they just they, 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 they hire the budget. Do they hire budget watchmakers? No, they have good watchmakers. I have no doubt but about that. But not as many as other brands. Right, they just don't have the, the, the capacity to produce a lot of higher <laughs> end watches. That's the worst Tim. defense of Omega no, I've ever heard. I'm Tim. not defending them. <laughs> yes. Tim, I can I can tell you from discussions with uh, with uh, managers from, from watch companies that it's yeah. not easy to find good watchmakers for, for a production. Yes. But right. let me let me tell you uh, uh, first hand experience. Um, I used to work for a luxury brand. I'm not mentioning them. It, it was not a, a watch brand. And mm. I can't tell you exactly how, how these kind of pricings are set. Mm. So you have a certain product, a product like um, this uh, um, Millspec uh, uh, Blancpain watch. Yes, yes. And you're just checking out, what, uh, you're doing something uh, called a benchmark price uh, pricing. Marco yes. um, probably can tell us much more about it than I can do. But basically, you're watching out what is your competition. Mm -hmm. and That's how why much I said 321 is priced similar to Daytona, right, Jonathan? Same kind yep. of idea. Yep. Right. yep. Sorry to cut you so, off. Go ahead. So, so then, then you're you're checking other brands if if they have a similar movement, a similar product, and you check the prices, and then you decide, okay, we're uh, cutting over or we're cutting under, we're cutting over because this and that and that is is more mm -hmm. special than other brands, and that's how you set a price, a set uh, a, a price in the luxury field, in my opinion has only very little to do with the effort or the costs that uh, that it's um, that it costs to make mm -hmm. just just look at uh, okay. at archie's uh, watch case yeah uh, just look at, at archie's watch case if you put uh, if if you calculate the effort and the material to make these cases you, yes. i don't know you, you may end up with a with a sum of 300 or five hundred dollars, 
and everything else is just uh, competitive pricing and benchmark pricing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, uh, to a certain degree, the, the everything is priced at, uh, uh, you know, like these watches, I don't know how much it costs them to make this uh, blank pond. Maybe a couple of thousand, maybe... Not cheap, Tim, because these are hand-finished watches. So, I mean, they don't yeah. pay their watchmakers minimum wage. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's that doesn't exist in Switzerland. <laughs> right. There's, a, there's some effort that went into, it, went into yeah. this watch. I mean, it's right? not the best kind of finishing. I mean, it's not, it's not like... It's not paddock level. There's a reason why oh, this rooted rotor, rotor is this so is... basic. My main criticism of uh, Blanc Pain, Jonathan, is the same criticism I have for Tudor with the Black Bay, and that everything is the Black Bay. Because I think Blanc Pain, like 45% or something, like 35 or 45%, I can't remember exactly, of all their sales is the 50 Fathoms, right? Yes. So they have 50 Fathoms Chronograph, 50 Fathoms Complications, 50 Fathoms Divers. Like it's just too much 50 fathom, and now Everything they came is, out with the bathy scap, and they're doing the same thing 50 a bathy scap complication, bathy scap chronograph, bathy scap dive. It's like, like there's no submariner chronograph, you know what I mean? It, you dilute the kind of history and the relevance of the model by creating all these different complications that have nothing to do with the original watch, if that makes sense, Jonathan. That's my main criticism of it. And I, I don't disagree with you. Maybe Mr. GMT is, is surprised that we are not yelling at, uh, on each other today. <laughs> <laughs> no, me and you had a civil discussion, John. We're cool, we're cool. Yeah, but um, just look at the screen. Um, uh, that is basically where Blancpain uh, started after they've been dead for 15 years. Um, uh, these classic uh, watches um, with, uh, with the, the moon phase. Actually, uh, Blancpain were one of the first uh, watch companies that uh, that had a watch with a moon phase. And back then, in the mid '80s, a moon phase was an indicator for a high complicated watch. Marco, and, is this uh, what you think of when you think of watchmaking? What do you mean, valet de jeu is notorious watchmaker for is sitting right, behind? It's, their... it's literally the the valet de jeu is like Philip Dufour, Romain Gautier. That's the valet de jeu is like the place in switzerland for watchmaking if i'm not mistaken or one of the it's best absolutely correct and it's amazing yeah. if you if you go to the valet de joux and uh, just drive yeah. around um you just pass by all these uh, famous watch companies like Audemars right. Piguet mm -hmm. and, and Jeje de Cult is just around the corner it's really amazing when you're driving there and it's beautiful there as well man i look at this blank pound right here what the? What were they thinking? Honestly, that's what I'm saying, right? It's the complications. Like it's a diver with complications. Like why? Yeah. I don't get. It. What a disaster. I I agree wow. on on that part, but uh, like I said, there is a classical line. I think it's Villeray or something, um, yes. which shows nice. uh, the, the no, complications. No. <laughs> Pardon? I said some are nice, not all. <laughs> there yeah, are a couple. Yeah. Some, oh, some are nice. Oh. Yeah. There are some dogs. There's some dogs in there. They have to survive. <laughs> right, 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 right. There you go. By the way, if if somebody is really, uh, really looking out for a deal, um, and this is an open secret for now five years, um, Tim, can you pull up the um, uh, the uh, perpetual chronograph in steel? They have an, an amazing perpetual calendar chronograph. They have here? Perpetual no, no. no. Actually, it's it's also uh, in the sports line. Let uh, me check. You just you, you just pull it up and send me the link in the in the private chat. R E G, hello, sir. Hello. Good evening. Hey, I got your I got your message. Uh, Excellent. You're on the list. You're on Perfect. the list. Thank you. What what message is that? Ah. Uh, that's ted top secret information I mean, look, look are we making a pub no no i mean mr gmt he 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 we'll, we'll tell well you know what let's just keep it between us let's keep it close circle we'll talk about this on the after show when it's off air perfect um i'm excited now yes it's something it's big it's gonna be huge it's gonna be bulky it's gonna be massive i don't know if i'm gonna be able to well, take then I'll, it I'll, 
I want to be on the list then. Yes. Yes. Ooh, yellow raincoat. Five dollar forty six cents. Super chat. My very wait. Villaray. 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 Quantime. Quantine complet. Right. <laughs> My God. Oh, that's not what he He didn't spell it correctly. Villaray. Quantime Now, that's Yellow Renko, he has some amazing, weird watches. I think, I believe, he's one of those guys who got, who actually, who got that Seiko, the, the new Seiko on the, on the strap. You know the, the 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 overpriced Seiko. You know what I'm talking about? The one that I complained about. I know about. what you're talking about. You're a pro provocateur. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't Gotta know. Gotta say, I like this the NATO. I like the traditional Le Mans chronograph, but I don't like this. I don't Let's like look it. at this. What the hell? But is that this? is a perpetual calendar flyback <laughs> chronograph for fifteen thousand US dollars. That's what is going to cost yeah. services? Yeah, but no. I mean. What's it called? The Tag Heuer also makes a chronograph that you can make for that you can buy for like ten thousand or fifteen thousand on the secondary market. Doesn't mean you yeah, should buy it. You know what I mean? Eight thousand dollars. It's true. To service it. Oh, um, no, I don't. I don't think so. No, it, it's a module, basically a perpetual calendar module on on it. it, it I guess it will be du between one thousand five hundred. Something like that. Do and do what they Yeah. That was that yeah, was a joke. That's, that's what I was joking. Yes. This Those are good movements. Do they, really they own the exclusive good. rights to it? Dubois de Prez? Or is it anybody? No, no, no. I think so. Huh? Um, anybody can use it? Um, actually, I have to, actually to, to ch that. check this out. But uh, as far as I know, actually, Dubois de Prez works with us. Beautiful. Ooh. This is really nice. He has a four blank pines. Man, yellow uh, yellow uh, raincoat. I just hope that you don't go Casey on us over here. <laughs> Because if you yeah. ever That's right. the <laughs> decide burnout. to quit the dreaded the... burnout, yeah. actually, I, I owned this particular watch as one of the first guys in, in Germany and, and maybe all over the world. I have an interesting story, and maybe not interesting for, for you guys, but for me. Oh, um, yeah. I, I used to work in, in retail, and um, yes. it was 1987. That gives you an idea how, how old I am. Um, I I was fascinated by Rolex and by Patek and by Audemars and uh, yeah. all these fancy brands, and then one day the boss came up and said, "There is a there is a, a company visiting us. They're Blancpain. Never heard uh, from them before." Ah, wow. 1987. Blancpain is revived. Yes, uh, it. I think it was revived in 1983. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so my boss said, okay, so, so the boss comes and he invited us to the most expensive restaurant uh, for a dinner. Mm. The problem is we only have one watch of them. <laughs> so, okay. we, so we, we needed to borrow two more watches. We had three watches in the company. We had to, uh, had to borrow two more watches uh, of, uh, uh, from Blancpain just to have a small group in our window. Because mm. what, what happens is when, when watch companies uh, uh, visit you, the first thing that they check out is your window, mm -hmm. where, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, place they are uh, decorated, if the decoration <sighs> is, uh, is okay, if, you, if it, they yeah. don't like the other co uh, companies that they are next to. Ah. So we had to borrow basically two, mo two watches uh, uh, just in order not to offend them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So then came Mr. Jean-Claude Biver, Mr. 100,000 volts. Jean-Claude Biver. Yes. By the way, Biver in French means Bieber, uh, Bieber the, the animal. Ooh. Bieber. And when, Bieber. and when you can see him smile, when you see him smiling, you know where he is. But, but that's in English. Is. Bieber is, because in French, it's cast off. A beaver ah, is cast okay. off in French. I didn't know yeah, that. It's different. Beaver is the English word. Beaver is the English word. But it's okay. not spelled like it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think Justin Beaver is also from Canada, right? <laughs> you guys yes. can have him, actually. We, yeah, we've you disowned him. him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys can have him back. Yeah. I think Canada disowned him a long time ago. 
So, so then this guy, Jean-Claude uh, Claude Biver, came in a crappy small car. Uh -huh. And he invited us to the most expensive restaurant. We had a fantastic dinner. Mr. Jean-Claude Biver is uh, electrifying like hell. Mm. And from that moment on, we were selling Blancpain like hotcakes. What? The now, next what, what lies we... did you have to tell to your customers? No lies. No. <laughs> everybody everybody <laughs> was so, yeah. so energized and so ah. excited. Actually, he didn't pay a penny. There were wow. no incentives. We were just fascinated by the way that he was talking about his, his watch and uh, his charisma. And I ordered this particular watch. It was smaller back then mm. for myself. Mm. Um, and I got it. And uh, I had discussions with Mr. Beaver, because, uh, Beaver, Beaver, mm. whatever. Um, and I told, and I told him... Justin Beaver here. Yeah. Okay. So I told him you you have so uh, you're talking so nicely about your movements. Why don't you display your movement with a glass crystal bottom? With the glass hooter. They didn't have the glass hooter. Uh, <laughs> it's called so, connection yet. Uh huh. So and and he said that's a great idea. And it took half a year to get the watch finished with a glass uh, case back. And uh. I was probably one of the first persons. Who had a, a, a transparent um, a case back um, back then because that was not uh, uh, common like it is today. Mm. Right. I don't know why uh -huh. they didn't. Do, well, probably because the it was harder to engineer sapphire crystals back then, right? Mm. I don't and know to be honest, and to be honest, back then most of uh, the watch companies were relying on seven seven fifty or on etas. Which mm. were not yeah, uh, uh, to display. So yeah, mm. incredible! Wow. But if By you have the way, long had ever made a quartz watch, because I know that <laughs> Jacques Le Beaver in the Talking Watch says this is the only brand that never made a quartz watch. I don't know if that's still true. It's true, or at least but, at the time. It was. But I can tell you why it's true. Fuck that quartz shit <laughs> no but uh, you know they, they were dead from 1975 until 1983 uh, right. they were not producing watches yeah because they so, were there uh, they didn't have a chance to produce a quartz <laughs> something like that basically yes damn and and that shows the the genius of mr jean-claude biver just to mm. uh, to put that weakness or perceived weakness into mm. a very strong point well, they were making, at least at the time, Jean-Claude Bieber was, what was it, like seven, what would we consider, like, grand complications, right? Yes, yes. There were seven, seven, seven watches that they were making that were grand complications. I'm talking about in the 80s, right? So, mm. like, very yes. few had the capabilities of doing that. We're talking AP, Paddock, the Holy Trinity, and JLC, probably. Yeah. But and maybe but, Gerard Perigo, maybe. But nobody, nobody could do uh, uh, th these complications all together in one watch. And right. uh, Bivert was speaking about these uh, complications. I, I think it was six. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It's seven, but I think it was six. Um, okay, and um, he was talking about th that watch for a couple of years. And you know who who made this first before Blancpain, having all these grand complications in one watch. It uh, was not long term. Paddock? Um, yeah. Tell us. Should we wait for a super chat? Reggae? No, go uh, ahead. Reveal. Reggae. You got... No, it's not Reggae. It what? was Gerald Genta. Really? Wait, Gerald Genta had oh. his own brand. Oh, my That's God. Me. With that retrograde stuff? Yes. No, not the Mickey Mouse one. Oh, my God. No, no, no. Not Mickey Mouse. <laughs> not Mickey Mouse. Actually... Tim, I'm I'm shooting you a link to a, to a watch. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. That's the the, yeah, Genta had his own brand, just complete, just dog. Like you would you would think like, oh, Genta, the guy who made Paddock, who made Aquanaut, the guy who created some of the most iconic uh, watches in the world, had his own brand. Can you, can we see his watches that he designed for himself? And then you see it and you go, damn, what the fuck? What was he did thinking? He, did he make the Bulgari Octo? I think so, right? Was yes. Gento no. Uh, I think uh, so. Right. I, think I think so, too. I think so. I don't remember. Let me look this up. Oh. Uh, 
a Fenissimo. Let's see. Yeah, it was. It was released under, but later took on Bulgari brand. Okay, so it was ori originally released under his name, but then released under Bulgari later on. Okay. Cool. It says, surprised they did not publish the alter alternate layers of the case as per Genta's original vision. Ah, uh, so maybe have you have you received my message? I'm looking for it. No, we didn't see it in private uh, chat. Oh no, oh, no it's oh like, my god, it's oh. ugly. What am I looking at? Yeah, that's disgusting. That's well, Tim, it's a super complication. Tim, Dude, I I'll mean... tell you I tell you something. We had Jella Genta watches back then. Yeah. We uh, we also had only two or three watches in, in the collection. Mm -hmm. And they were awful uh, in terms of quality. They were always breaking. They, they were always troublesome. Mm. So now imagine a young Jonathan Higgins, mm. first time in Basel. Um, mm. And I had one mission to go to Mr. Genta yeah. and to, to remind him that we had several repairs uh, um, uh, on the line and uh, just to ask him to finish them and maybe make his watches better. Ooh. So, also, so, yeah. Ooh. young Higgins. Okay. One second, one second. Let's, let's get this super chat. Mega, mega chat. Yellow raincoat. $10.46. I don't know why he keep doing these 46 cents. It's, it's weird. But okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. Having owned multiples of both JLC and Blank Pond, I would recommend people see Blank Pan in real life. And aesthetics are better. And yes, I understand the JLC history. Ooh. You know what? I you. Dude, I think, you know, he might be right. Because uh, I, uh, I've i seen some JLCs and they're kind of, they're bo the dial, especially the dial work, it's kind of like, mm, nah. The JLC dial work is a lot is very similar to Cartier. It's like eh, it's simple. It's like eh, it's good. It's good. It gets the job done. Um, but w Blank Pond, they actually have their own boutique on the Fifth Avenue. And whenever I stop by, I look. I look inside. And I was like, Pfft. man, it's it's super hard to get in. They got massive security and it's crazy. Nobody's in there never, but still. I probably should go in and do some little inter, uh, you know, some investigative reporting. Yellow Rainbow, have you uh, purchased all your watches uh, retail, or are you going on the secondary market to, to get all these Secondary market. market. Let's be honest. He's not a he's not a crazy person. Come on, come on. He maybe he's, he's a, maybe he's building up a, a buying history to get a, a to get real, what. There's no Fantastic. Blank Pond Royal Oak. I don't right. think there's a single blank pond that goes over retail except these Hodinky red. Yeah. red. yeah, only the limited edition yeah. 50 Fathoms go over retail. And like very old 50 Fathoms that are like mil spec ones. Yeah. So, yeah, so let me one. just complete the, the Gerald Genta story. Yes, for, yes, for please, a second. please continue. So, so young, young Jonathan Higgins went to uh, the uh, Gerald Genta uh, stand mm. on, in Basel. Um, mm. which was quite hidden. It was not easy to find because he had only a very small kind of uh, uh, room, little small room. And I was mm. asking for Mr. Genta. Mm. And he turned up. I, I have not seen a picture of him before. He was extremely nice and gentle, and he was uh, totally surprised that, he, that his watches didn't work. <laughs> and he promised me that, that he would look after the repairs and everything. And then he said... Um, but um, um, I have uh, I have just finished that uh, grand complication. Um, yes. Would you mind seeing it? Oh! And I thought he was joking because I heard that uh, that Blancpain was working on such a project, but nobody really believed that uh, Blancpain would finish it. And I was yeah. totally surprised that Genta had something like that on hands. I said, "Yeah, yeah, of course." And he gave me that exact watch. He he made the uh, grand complication in, in in various variants. I think not one is uh, is uh, is like the other. But that was exactly uh -huh. the watch that I had in hands, and oh, it was okay. fully working. And it was mind blowing. Everything worked what? on this thing. 
probably 1980, 1988 or something like that. So it, it How was. How thick was that watch? It looks like it's like forty millimeters thick. Well, it's it's not it's not his greatest design. Let's say it like that. Right, 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 right. I mean, but, it's like he took to... several uh, several of his uh, royal oaks and then stacked them together into a kind of pancake tower. Well, Tim, he has to he has to make it that. And these look like know, Cartier. Yes. Yes. What the fuck? Yes, and, That's amazing. And he's, he was no celebrity back then. He he was basically a poor watchmaker. Because he, he didn't back back in the eighties, he didn't have any fame for having done the Nautilus or or the Royal Oak. Nautiluses and Damn. Royal Oaks. When we were selling one of them, we were popping uh, champagne uh, <laughs> uh, because we were happy to, uh, having sold such a ridiculously expensive watch. Back then, it was nothing special. Wow! Wow! Wait, so I, I don't understand. He he. Did he design the movement for these, or did he design the case and somebody else did the movement for him? I think he had he had some people who who yeah, made the the movement for him, and <sighs> probably it's all modules stacked uh, together. But the watch yeah. was working. I was I was mm. uh, checking it out, and uh, the chimes worked, and uh, the hands were moving. So the, the it's it's quite common in, in Basel that you that you just have dummies with glued on hands or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so and everything was working. It's, it was mind blowing. I've never seen something like that, and probably I will never see something like that again in my life. So question, Damn. question. Yeah. Not to uh, not to open old wounds, but how much would this cost to service? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a grand comp. I mean, I mean, that, look, yeah. it's twenty five millimeters thick. God, you don't wear this thing, guys. You never get a service. That's the thing. Put it on your, your first, wall. Mm. Ari, your first mission would be to find a watchmaker who is crazy enough to start this kind <laughs> of project. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you show this to a watchmaker, he'll probably go, ah, okay. Let's just, you know, I want half of your estate to begin with, and then we'll work from there. Yeah. <laughs> no, probably probably his, uh, his hassle-free life is more important than starting with something like that. <laughs> now, what, what are even these complications? I have no idea what's even happening here. Like, I understand this is probably, that's a date. What about the red hand? That's that's the second. It, uh, oh, so it has a perpetual calendar, of course. Mm -hmm. um, there is a chronograph some uh, somewhere hidden, or maybe on the other side because it it had a reverse side as well as. What the flip? Also, look um, at that. What is the grand and little? It's the um, grand chime and small yeah, chime. Grand chime and small chime. <sighs> yeah. And this is a switch to turn on the chimes or to turn them off. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think you you activate it with one of the crowns. It's crazy. <clears throat> exactly. And what about this one? This, this one that says from goes from zero to one. It's it's either uh, the um, uh, a power reserve or no, power the power reserve, reserve right or, or the chime. No, the oh, this one. It might, yeah, it might be the chime. Maybe it's like I don't know. Actually, that's right. Yeah, Three no idea. yeah, it makes no sense. It, from zero to <laughs> to one, I don't. Moon phase, really? I don't know. When when did he have a moon for for that thing? Yeah, it might be on the other side. Uh, I, I think wonder if it's the reverse. Is yeah. there? Can somebody bring up a reverse image of this of this watch? I want to see the back. This is pretty. You like it to see from the back, right? I want to see the back side, the back you door. Like right, right, right. I want to see if it's as big as the front suggests it is. <laughs> I want to see that booty, guys. Let's see if it's got some junk in the trunk. Ah, yeah. The captain says, Ari, a hint of sherry would be ideal. Last night I learned that McKellan is not using a real sherry cask what but something similar very disappointing <sighs> wow that's vicious are right, you're muted we can't hear a word you're saying yes now maybe he's just really quiet Sorry. 
Yeah, I was just whispering. No, so oh. um, <laughs> we were just talking on the chat about scotches, but McAllen, just while we're on, while you brought up the chat, um, unless you're buying the base stuff, is mm-hmm. very very overpriced for what you get. There's no value for money with McAllen when you start going up the, uh, you know, going going up the year expressions. I mean, I personally buy the cheapest McAllen you can get. It's really good. Anything above it is okay. I have a question. Yeah. So my uh my liquor store right they have mm-hmm. mccallan mm-hmm. 12 for what way to go Sorry, 56 what? 12 for 56 dollars i saw that yeah no no so it, it no no it's not oh yeah yeah 12 12 year 12 year old 56 12 year old. is this good is this good in by canadian standards yes it's very good because we're taxed to hell here for our alcohol and but mm-hmm. uh, i would say that's a i don't have an issue with that price yeah the yeah. price is good okay yeah very cool. And wait, what was the other one? The blue. The blue seems expensive. That's that's about what I expect it to be. Converted to Canadian, you pay it about 300 ish for it. Like it's it's fine. Okay. And what is this? Hein. That doesn't Never had look, it. That doesn't look good. You shouldn't have it. Let's see. I think that's it. Oh, what is it? Ace of Spades? <laughs> Two hundred and forty dollars for a bottle of champagne, man. I drink champagne like it's water. It's not worth any amount of money. I, me. I don't appreciate champagnes myself. You can give me the cheapest stuff, and I'll be fine with it. I just don't. It's not one of those alcohols I, I just I appreciate. I know no, some people won't do. I really like the hill, the this one, this champagne, but I don't know. I'm just unable to pick it up. It's just every time I go in, they don't have it. So what it's, makes a what makes a champagne good? You know, oh, if I have a fine champagne, what's the difference between that and the the cheaper stuff? Which honestly, you know, I drink it like once a year on New Year's. To be honest with you. Well, you know, this champagne. I don't know. Have you ever tried this thing? It's so freaking good. No, I've it's never like had a, this before. Man, you have to try it. It's Saint Hillary. It's very easy to remember because it's Saint Hillary Clinton. <laughs> she is a saint. Right? I know she's a saint to you. I know. <laughs> yes. I know. yes. I know. <laughs> it's the Saint Hillary Clinton, everybody. You know, you gotta pay respects to your saints. And pay respect uh, for the dead, the deceased. Because <laughs> so, she got killed by now. <laughs> exactly. No, it's a saint. But it's uh but but so that's a really easy way to remember it. But it's so good and it's just dirt cheap. Uh so I don't know if you remember, but like the first couple of times that I joined the show. Mm-hmm. I had, I think, I bought like three bottles of this stuff, and I was just going through it like, like it's water. You know what? I could drink this ten dollars stuff on New Year's Eve, and yeah. I won't complain. It's the only time of year I drink this stuff. You're not, yeah. you're not gonna believe it. This stuff tastes better than, you know, I I brought this for my family, uh, for like I think Christmas or something, and we popped it open, and I said, "This is a hundred and twenty dollars," and they said, "Oh my god!" And we had some vivid Clico, which I got at the after buying a Rolex, after I got a uh, Panda, they mm-hmm. gave me a bottle of champagne. And that one is like $70, I think, with it Clico or something. I think that's how it, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, they everybody said that they can't believe how good this one is. By the way, do not buy the sweet one because they have the semi-sweet. No, you need it's, dry. I know you need it. Yeah. It's dry. This that is I know. bad. I didn't like it. I didn't, it's too sweet, this one. Anyways, it they 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 it blew their mind. They said, "Oh my God, Tim, thank you so much for blessing us." But yeah, it was good. It was really good. Uh, so are we? Ooh, I'm getting some coffee. We'll be back in two minutes. Okay. So I don't think we're gonna get the backside of this watch. We're not gonna see that booty. So let's. Uh, uh so Ari, Ari. Hmm. What do you want to tell me, man? How are you doing? Thank God I'm doing okay. You know, it's been a long week of work, so it's nice to have a semi-relaxing day. I yeah. can't complain. I can't man, complain. I got fucking dragged through dirt and sand today. What, Probably, what happened? I yeah, well, the hardest day of work ever. But, uh, but you know... So I'm going to show you a watch I've been looking at. 
Yes. Let's, really watch them in Let's see it. Let's see it. I want to. I want to get your raw, unfiltered reactions. Mm, here we go. By here a brand, it's called Urban Jurgensen. Okay, Urban Jurgensen. Mm. Urban <laughs> Jurgensen. Yeah, this is called yes, Urban. Hey, I'm not Jurgensen. a big fan of that brand name. Okay. Okay. Tell me what you think, Tim. It almost says he's never gonna buy champagne. Here we go. Are we ready for this? I don't think I'm ready. Oh, so actually. I like it. Yeah. So the blue is Wow. Nice. I love the dial. Urban Jerkins. Man, no, it's like, probably some kind of shit. Like he's just pulling her. No, look, I, look I at like the it. dial. You see that oh, texture on the dial? It's, it's like an eggshell. And then. It's yeah. an actual oh, eggshell. Look at the hands. Do you see those observatory hands? So yeah. those are those aren't one piece. They're friction fitted. Friction is, fitted. Yeah. That's how 30, I like to fit my. 30, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say the <laughs> stupid one. I was like, "Fuck!" I set myself up. Yeah. Look how the teardrop looks. Ooh. But the nicest part is the movement. Let's see if I can find pictures. Teardrop lugs are great for snowflakes. Ooh, look! Look at, at the code de soleil. Beautiful. It's the code de soleil. Right. Damn. That's beautiful. It I looks look like it radiates nice from and... that hairspring. Damn. Isn't this gorgeous, Tim? Fucking you know why amazing. I like it, Tim? Yeah. Because this was made, well, in part, because there's a couple of people who collaborated, but in part by my favorite watchmaker, Carrie Voodalainen. Uh, Tim, you know I'm a, I'm a value shopper, right? So Carrie Voodalainen partnered he with Urban Gentry, this. and that's the, how they created the Urban <laughs> Jurgensen <laughs> brand. Not quite. Not quite. <sighs> it's not even that expensive, to be honest. Well, it's not cheap either. It's... It's sixteen thousand four hundred Swiss francs plus plus VATs, value added tax. Okay. But how much is it on these, the on the secondary market? Yeah, there's none on the secondary market at the there's moment. None. So right. if there's anyone, they just came out with this a couple of years ago. So if there's if there's an individual out there who wants to get fleeced, completely fleeced by you, Mark, right? You would you would <laughs> <laughs> would you trade right. your your submariner for this? In a heartbeat, Tim. Wow. Not even a question. Wow. I would so, trade my sub in a heartbeat for the history's 1942 also. In a heartbeat. What would you trace your Bruce in. what would you trade your Bruce Wayne for? Nothing. It's never leaving the collection. Really? You can't leave exactly. the collection without the two chains. It has to be a, right. a combo. The Bruce combo. Wayne is forever gonna be in my collection. I can't are you kidding, guys? The story behind this is why I collect watches. The story behind these watches. Absolutely. Guys. Amen. Amen. So I like this quite a bit. The dial is very clean. I like cleaner mm -hmm. dials. The color is nice. The eggshell <laughs> texture is beautiful. The blue is beautiful. It's all, it's just really great. It works. Wow. Look at that. I don't like the hand, the the hour hand. Oh, I, 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 I appreciate it. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. it. I appreciate the work that goes into it, but uh, I can't get no, over the, the Jonathan, the you just hand. can't see it, but inside that circle is actually a piece of sapphire, and it actually magnifies the hours, <laughs> so you can see them better. What do you think, Jonathan? you know about Urban Jurgensen at all? Oh, I know. I know. And um, what do you as think, far man? as I know. Um, it's it's an interesting brand. Um, I agree that the, the movement is nicely fi finished with that sun ray, uh, sun ray uh, pattern. Um, actually, I'm a I'm a sucker for beveling, and uh, there is not much beveling going on. Uh, what? On Look at all the movement. interior angles. Look at all Look the at bevels. The... Are you kidding? Oh. Look at the interior angles. Look at the bevel. Ha have a look at micro artist studios and you know what a bevel is <laughs> okay yes yeah yeah but the, listen there's different uh, different styles you know what I mean? they're different levels not yeah. all, the, not all bevels are wild, there, there are or, different wild, angles wild. to bevel no, the listen, best listen, I, is I, angle listen. Too for beveling at least from what i was listen about. Uh, yeah I, I totally appreciate uh, the, the brand and the craftsmanship. As far as I know, um, uh, Urban Jürgensen uh, um, himself, he sold the watch to one of his clients, one of no. his collectors. So I think the collector, the client is now running the company. I think I, I've heard oh. something like that. Um, no, I'm pretty sure it's like they ran out of Jürgensen's to, because uh, it started with Jürgen. technically it was... Uh, Fuck, I forget the first name. It was Jerkin Jerkinson, I think it was. <laughs> it's the father, well, that's it's the father of Urban because and he started working, he apprenticed under John Arnold and 
Abraham Louis Breguet. And then Urban Jurgensen kind of learned an apprentice under his father and then started the brand. And they did pocket watch, what have you, for like royalty and Danish royalty, French royalty. Yep. All and I could hear is somebody jerk somebody off to, to get the company. And then it passed down like four or five hands. And then at the end, like, I think it was. <laughs> I don't know how that's supposed to. And then, and then they ran out of people who wanted to run the company. So they sold it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yes. I think that's the story. And and uh, as far as I know, one of his, uh, his uh, clients, and I think he's from Germany. Um, he he is now running the company. He he didn't take it over. It was basically oh. handed over to him, and it's running it. Was it uh, handed in, in over. To... It passed several hands until it was handed over to <laughs> <laughs> several our hands. <laughs> oh my God! You guys, come on! <laughs> yes. But yeah, carry food aligning at a discount, Tim. This is what I want, but. Guys, I gotta stop getting distracted. It's all about the VC history, 1942. Mm. I think that's that and the Bruce Wayne. What more do I need? I don't need any more watches. That's Logan it. Hall, finished. wait, how many hands did Jerkin go through? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that's not how you spell it. It's Jergen. It's J E R G E N, I'm pretty sure. Actually, oh, it's yeah, you, the captain. Oh, the you got captain, captain. In the Hello. second class citizen. Captain. Oh, captain. Hey, captain. <laughs> hey. Hey guys, hey, great hey, show. Hey, How you man. doing, Jonathan Quail Higgins the <laughs> third? Hello, a long name, man. It's a long <laughs> name. Uh, you have to tell people what that who don't know what that means. But I, I had to come on, Tim. I, I was yep. enjoying the chat. Um, but I heard something just now about Jerkin the Gherkin. Uh, so this watch, it just kept going from hand to hand. Like we're all three year olds here. Yeah. And I couldn't help it. We're talking it's about a handmade watch that's been work. passed from hand to hand through many uh, generations. And yeah, a lot of people had to jerk each other off to create this company. <laughs> it just it, it guys, passed I mean, through a lot of people's hands. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, oh God. This you is think, gold. guys, if you think. A watch company can be born without uh, someone jerking someone <laughs> off at some point. You have to be crazy. Oh, no. The ca casting couch is well used. Well used. Exactly. And Jonathan, you know the, the only reason to get into watchmaking? I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. But, but, Jonathan, think about it. In this watch, you get collaboration between Kerry and I don't know if you know Chronode. You know who Chronode is? Nope. Okay, so they're basically a movement maker. They make a bunch of, especially escapements and um, mm. okay. balance balance wheels for like MBNF and mm. a lot of independents. His name is Jean-Francois Mojon, him. Okay. And you get the styling of Derek Pratt, right? Because Derek Pratt is the one who made the kind of teardrop logs, observatory style hands when he worked with, with Urban Jurgensen. I think it was in the 90s or something like that. So you basically get three master watchmakers all in a watch that's pretty – Pretty damn affordable. I mean, all things considered, considering what you're getting. You know what? I, I do have to say that the name the name of a brand is so important to get right. <laughs> no, no, there we go. And I, no, no, no. And I think that Urban Jurgensen got it right because that's a cool name. Last night we were Very talking cool. about Chapek. Chapek? How do you pronounce Zapek. it? Zapek. 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 Oh, Zapek. Chapek. Close enough. Chap Chapek. 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 Chapstick. Oh, chapstick. So you know the problem with Chapstick? Chapek. <laughs> <laughs> is that here's the problem I felt because I guess it was a spin off, if you will, or yeah. a breakup, whatever you want to call it, from Patek, from what I understand. The guy yeah. left, he's pissed he off. He betrayed him. He was a Judas. He was a Judas. He could have called his watch. Yeah. So, Chep Pack, I, I'm going to butcher it. Um, yeah. It's too close and similar, the name to Patek. Yes. And so now, today, even if it's a, the best watch in the world, mm. people are going to look at it and say, Oh, it's a knockoff Patek. Is that mm. Patek? Is that Chapek? Chap? It's just bad. It's just not yeah. a good name. Plus, it's a not a good look. Right? It's not well, I don't think they operate under Chapek and Patek. I don't. But think it's on their dial. It's on the dial, man. By the way, uh, now this Urban Jurgensen literally summarizes what Marco. I now I get like when Marco was saying, "Oh, you know, I really like that idea of a watchmaker just working with his hands." 
I just didn't know what the watchmaker was working on. <laughs> you guys are so. You know what though? Hey, take a look at that hour hand though. It's a long <laughs> week, folks. Long week. <laughs> take a look at that hour hand. <laughs> This is uses crack- special lubrication. Uh, Ari, I haven't even cracked the sherry yet. <laughs> the uh, you see that hour hand? I know. I think Marco likes that styling. I, I, I like it too. I like you it do? too. All right, it bothers. I don't. I mean, I'll take the other side. Captain, one drink on on us. I don't like it too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I knew I, you're coming. You're making a comeback, Jonathan. I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much. You get to you see know, the I'm, dial. You get to see the dial. It's pretty interesting. I'm, yeah, it's a circle. It's interesting. You know, it's a circle it's jerk. It's a circle okay. jerk. Yeah. yeah. You know what it looks like? You guys know what it looks like. You guys are going to town. Fuck me, Dad. Yeah, fuck it. Like, you know what we call By cool? the way, guys, if, there something if you're like, watching like, and enjoying the show, don't forget to slam that like button. Yeah. <laughs> when you're done slamming. Like you yeah. slam your car. <laughs> and... Oh. Um, and you need to keep in mind the German hand was also involved. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Matt, how do you think you they make like that, that dial, man? Right, let's be well, let, let, let's can... get some close-up, Marco. Let's get the Here. close-up on the dial. Ooh, First, what does the texture remind yeah. you? First, a final cut solid fine silver dials engraved with the select indexes, numeral and text. The ultra shallow engravings are hand-filled with lacquer and the surplus hard material. Then polished by off the dial Grenache layer I'm in is then built by manually treating and brushing a secret mix of silver powder, salt, and other ingredients onto What's the, the other ingredient? <laughs> Cocaine. What's the secret juice? <laughs> uh, not <laughs> not it's it's up a frosted, pearled, and unique silvered surface with depth and granularity. Granularity. That's beautiful. Interesting. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Look at that, Tim. That's Come pretty. Cool. That, 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 look at yeah, the, look at the texture. Wow. They say sand. Wow. Guys, I have an idea. Mark, uh, whoever's co- creating a watch company, we have to do a dial with sand. Yes. I mean, real sand, like the beach. Just get the real. sand. The beach. And throw it on, <laughs> and we're, we'll call the watch the beach. You just throw it the right beach. on. The I think dial. actually Kramer got that trademark. The beach. The beach. That's right. Oh, it's the on. ocean. The beach. So you better hope fine. that sand the... doesn't get in the movement. Oh boy! No, no, no! It sure. No. That's the whole point. No. It's Instead true. of using <laughs> lubricants, we'll use sand. That's what yeah. she said. Oh my god! <laughs> well, well intended. No. Like the movement, we she get a lot of service it. and repair costs. Well, you know, this this will show the people who hold the watch and then use the same hand to to jerk their. Girl. Just to piss I actually have a, I actually game. have a watch. I have a watch non-sexual question. Yes. Are we going to do we, Will we allow it? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. The the dial. Does yeah. that count in the percentage when you're considering whether it's Swiss make it officially Swiss made or not? Like yes. like, does the dial have to be it's, made it's in Switzerland? It's the cost. It's the cost. Sixty mm. percent has to be made. Sixty percent of the cost has to be made in Switzerland. And the yeah, dial is part of, of that cost, the, the cost right. of the watch, right? Okay. Right, correct. All right. Not, not sixty percent of the dial doesn't have to be. So, for example, if you, if you, no, the cost of the entire watch, the yeah. entire watch, the right. cost, cost. Well, yes. you know, they they worded that way so that they have as much um, flexibility. Um, yeah, flexibility. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that way think... they can make the most expensive things in China. Yeah, you, you just make some creative counting, and there you go. Yep. Right. What if you put like an expensive ruby that's in sourced in Switzerland? I don't even know if that's possible. But um, so the cost of that pe- that ruby is sixty percent or sixty one percent of the yep. other pieces. Can you do that? Yes. And, and everything, everything else is, made, else in is China. made in China. Yeah. It's like we make the whole watch in China. Bring it We're in, in with baby. One ruby. We're in. <laughs> I was kind of asking because of that. I wasn't sure if yeah. it's sixty percent of the cost of the movement. It's has to be Swiss, Swiss or is it so cool. the cost of the wait. watch? Okay. Okay. The watch. An entire watch. We're going to do this. The entire watch. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do this. So most of the cost comes in the movement anyways mm-hmm. because you have to assemble it. You have to obviously stamp but, but out the there. parts if you're serially producing stuff. Right. Tim, yeah. I, I would like to, to offend uh, uh, Marco even more uh, with all due Please. respect. Nothing good happens before somebody says with all due respect, guys. Just throwing it out there. Go ahead. Okay. You, you can count on that. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is just a personal uh, opinion, personal taste. 
I don't mm. like these lugs. Um, they oh, uh, they remind. Holy shit! You didn't oh. go there. Wow. And I tell I, I tell you why. You didn't just say that, did you? Oh my god! I tell you why. I, I, I need to go I, I tell you now. why. I'm they, still offended. They oh, remind. Oh, they were they remind me of cow horns, which is the corn de vache in, in That's my in, favorite in style of lugs. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Oh no. No, I can't I can't live with them. Uh, but those lugs are beautiful. Whole no. lugs are beautiful. No, no. I, oh, I, I, think I, think I think that's what makes the lug. that's why I love this. Yeah. I, I think I know, the, the best lugs in this type is the corn de vache. Wow. Yeah, they're the best for sure, definitely. They don't do it uh, to me. Tim, can can you pull up Vacheron 47101? Oh, Mark is going to pull it up right now. I got to tell you, they're interesting lugs. Marco is the one who pointed out that style of lug to me in the corner. Oh, I love these. This is twisted and when lugs, I was looking right? at this watch, yeah, thank you, Marco. Yep. I knew what it was. The, the so. one with the black dial. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to hear a story? Yes. Yeah. Please. Please. I've we owned this stories. watch for mm -hmm. I've owned this watch for 25 years with with a black dial. Wow. It, you got to start you got to start off with once upon a time. I I bought it back then for myself. I never wore it just because of the lux. <gasps> and I sold it 3 3 years ago. Guess for how much? How much? Ten dollars. Is this the patrimony chronograph? You had to give it away for free. Nobody Did would you take give it, it away. No, it, <laughs> it is part part of the historic line, and okay. it has the Le Mania base movement, like like in the modern Vacherons. Okay, it go, has go, a guilloche dial, a, a gold dial, guilloche black uh, lacquered. It's totally special. Not many of them have been made, and I sold it for twelve thousand two hundred dollars. And I was you could have traded it to Marco. Oh, I, listed it, held it. I listed it for half a year and nobody was biting. I received offers, $8,000, $9,000. And mm -hmm. I was just, uh, uh, I just wanted to get it uh, out of my, my life because I didn't mm -hmm. like the Lux. I never wore it. And I bought a mm -hmm. Lung instead. What size mm -hmm. is it? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I think it was 38 or 39. It, it does look on the small side. Mm. See these lugs, I don't like, but the teardrop ones, I love. I love those lugs. Yeah. But Marco, this is like Breguet lugs. This is like Longay lugs. Right. These are too long. These are way too long. Like mm. I don't know. They're too uh. big. These horns are <laughs> right. too big for you, Marco. I don't know if it's gonna fit, Tim. I don't know if it's gonna, fit. gonna fit. Jesus, this on my very wrist. Sexual. On my wrist, of course. Know, on my wrist. Know. But we talked about watches for two minutes, so that right. was pretty good. So right. yeah. yeah. Ari, what are you doing? We are trying to stay on topic with the sexual sexual <laughs> references. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I won't ask any more watch questions, I promise. <laughs> Um, so this is wait. What what what, what nice. was going through your mind when you bought this watch in the first place? Actually, I I loved it because of the movement. Uh, first ah. of all, um, and um, uh, Vacheron gave me a very good deal on cool. it. Uh, wait, how well. much did you buy, buy it for? Um, not gonna say that. <laughs> what, too much. <laughs> it was cheap. It was cheaper than I sold it for. Oh, okay. No, no. There okay. you go. That's good. Okay. You Jonathan, made so, Still? so you're a flipper. You're a flipper. <laughs> Look at yes. you made money. I'm Look at those in the horns. Oh, Look at the the horns the lock. are awful. So this I like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is beautiful. beautiful. Feast this your eyes. What about this the other beautiful. one? What about the Urban Jurgensen? You do like that one, Art? I like this one more. Oh, it's sort of live, but this is, this is like 10 times the price. Yeah, yeah true. Cool. Okay, the other one's good too. The other one's good too. You know what? Go yeah, to up Logan Hall's comment. Logan Hall. Logan. Go to Hall. the patrimony chronograph. My the love. Oh, those are dogs. I don't know. Love. They're My dogs. Lovely lady, they're cheap, man. They're cheap dog do. Mm. They're, they're not dogs. They're not dogs. Ow! Ow! They're, ow! They're definitely dogs. These are dogs. Absolute dogs, guys. This is a Submariner chronograph, guys. Submariner chronograph. These are bad pictures, though, too, though. You really can't. You can't. Yeah, I know. Hold on. Let me, let me get a good it's one. Based on the La Mania, uh, which one? Yeah. Precursor to the, the same one. 2310. Yep. La Mania 2310. All right. Look, I want to be La Mania. So tiny. Forget these watch companies. La Mania is kick killing it. But look how small the movement is. Well, no, I guess you get a lot of gold then. Right. It's not that small. It's not that small. You know what, though, Tim? This yes. watch, right? 
Yeah. Um, I think the the uh, white gold mm -hmm. is better than this this rose looking version. Wait, how much is that thing? Tommy, yep. exactly. That's Tim. You're a mind reader. Tommy found this for me, right? Or just we were looking, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. 50, 70, 50, 70. I said, hey, how about something for thirty k Calatravas, blah blah blah, whatever yeah. it may be, dress piece. Yeah. He came up with this in a white gold or this version, thirty five thousand. Yeah. No. Actually, I'm sorry. Alex found one for right. twenty seven thousand on wow. Chrono twenty four. We were That's like, not that cheap. Twenty seven thousand. I mean, it's comparatively it's, though. It's, it's a lot of money, but it's not. It's it's a lot lot of money. Money. Would you get that? Twelve thousand max. Tim, Tim, would you get this or would you get like a History X nineteen or Captain? Sorry, would right. you get this or the History X nineteen twenty one? Because they go for actually the history. Is Man, I'd rather the have month. no watch than this. Thing. Wait, Marco, yeah. you mean the, the twenty-one or the forty-two? <laughs> the I'm going this. No, let's put it that way. After the panel, Marco hates it. Tim hates it. So yeah, no, this is not happening. But this one is yeah, the same. Yeah. Same money. Similar. You know money. what I like though? Similar or the same? I think this is not a chronograph. The ninth. Yeah, but this is way better. better. I would rather have this. It's not a chronograph. How do you compare them? I, I can't deal with. I, I can't watch deal with dials. I can't deal with This one is a tough one to get, right? No, I can't Let's everybody dial. talk at the same time. Everybody talk at the same time. La, 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 talk, la, talk, la, talk, la. talk, 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 talk. All right, let's know what's going on. Why, why are we talking at the same time? <laughs> Marco, the platinum one that Carson Chrono has isn't that oh. amazing. Fuck! Don't tell me about it, dude. I'm so jealous of him. It's not even funny. Yeah. That's the one to get the platinum. Do you, do you yeah, know about yeah, that yeah, leather the strap? That's the one to yeah, get. Yeah, it's got the platinum threading. He showed yes. it to us. Do you crazy. know how much it costs? I have no. It's price. It's right? so I, mean, I was asking cheap. my dealer because actually I'm uh, I have a Grand Seiko uh, incoming, um, also with a with a white gold dial with a frosted white gold dial, and I wanted mm -hmm. the the bracelet from the Vacheron. And uh, they charge you over one thousand two hundred dollars just for the strap with the platinum Ooh. weaving. I mean, listen, Jonathan, if you're getting the platine, it's because I mean, because they're already sold out, right? They're all allocated already. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're getting that watch, let's be honest. Yeah, twelve hundred dollars. That's a drop in the bucket. You know, yeah, I mean, sure. it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's Look that's that. not even surprising actually. Twelve hundred sounds. Look like at that. That's the one to get. I think this is the one to get. But uh, uh, Marco, Marco, I'm to be sure. honest, th this uh, if if you're getting a Vacheron, this is the way to go, and and not the nineteen twenty four or or how is it called? I, I like that the nineteen twenty one. Twenty one. You don't like the nineteen twenty one? I disagree. Um, I disagree. Twenty one. That's uh, what's his name? That rapper is twenty one. Savage. <laughs> 21. I'd get a boomer that. reference. Look at what savage. Hip and half I think the, the, with the hip hop references. I think What's the that? square one is is uh, appealing. Um, I uh, and and but you will always have in mind that there is a platinum one uh, version of of that watch, which is far yeah, more nicer, and right. uh, so you will never really be happy with it. Right. Mm. Toyota Mall likes the red version. Wants me to pull it up. Hold on one second. The, the 1942, it's That's nice cool. if you like the 40 styling. That's the whole appeal. It's a vintage like, watch, but I modern, like, modern like build, it. modern make. Like I personally, like I don't love bit. the 40 styling, but if you like it, it's great. I really like it, actually. This is really nice. Logan Hall asks when I'm going to a VC boutique. I don't even think I have any VC boutiques here. Hold on. No, there, there is one in Montreal, isn't there? I thought there was. Oh one. yes, that's you know what? That's funny. That's the same AD guys who didn't want to serve me when I went in there, and I left a nasty review. I, I knew there was one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit hesitant. Forget it. Oh. I'm not going back in there. <laughs> well. But to be honest, I'm I'm quite shocked about the the games that they are playing with the overseas right now. That that is really disgusting. I agree. What what JJ tells and uh, and. Uh, Alex, Jonathan, the guy was on the phone with JJ, and he literally says to his face, "Oh yeah, I waited for you to pre-order it because I knew the price was going to get increased." <laughs> yeah, dude, but, what a fucking scumbag! Like oh. Jesus Christ! Uh, but I can tell language, you, but Jesus, you know I what's funny you. is yeah. that now Rolex, when they had this power, they've been actually pretty polite throughout. You see these other brands get the same power that Rolex got, and they're literally to your face. And yeah, like, yeah, Tim. 
Dude, the you want Rolex. this Rolex? What are you willing to do, Conrad? You do you want this Vash run? What What are you willing to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, are you sure you want to hear that answer? Uh -oh. Let's talk. We got a couch in there. Let's have a little <laughs> talk. Yeah, and, and, and the difference is just wait, guys. The Rolex, they're ADs. Yeah. They don't have direct control. Yeah. And the Vacheron are boutiques. You would think yeah. they would have better control. They, well, they have con better control of you. They can they can they can set up special BDSM rooms in the back. They can do all <laughs> kinds of stuff. But what 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 ADs do you go to? <coughs> Guys, this is, this is Tim's secret. New York. Yeah. No this is how he gets real so, sports. So exhausted. The dungeon. <laughs> I like to come with Tiny Stacker. The crooked dial would work if I was in a fighter plane in 1942. No, Captain, you're not. You're just not drunk enough. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Jeez. Right. That's true. Pavel, no nice. Rolex, no peace for this Vash run historiques. Ooh! Look, I mean, let's go back a little bit to these. We got like four minutes, guys. Four, four minutes, minutes left to go. That's yeah, four 40 minutes. minutes. Oh, That's 40 minutes. Yes. So, <laughs> so four minutes, I, I will pull, put out a, a bold uh, theory and uh, yes. let's see what the punters think of that. Mm -hmm. So the no ra radiation dial, the story goes in the 60s, um, these radium dials were a big no-no because uh, everybody discovered that they were harmful. I have a totally different theory um, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, Blancpain and these no red dials. And I will mm -hmm. put, them, uh, put, uh, put it out right now, world exclusive, and I just sure. wanted to know what the punters think. Yep. In my opinion... These have been done for combat divers. So Today? combat divers, combat divers, fighting okay. divers. Okay. This is a military watch. A combat diver, the main uh, subjective is uh, to, to remain un invisible, stealth. Okay. And my theory is if you have a, a, a watch with a radium dial, you can be detected by a Geiger counter. So okay. the radioactivity of your watch basically tells the enemy that you're, that, that you're out to get him. And my theory is the known radiation dial was done for, uh -huh. for the purpose not to be caught. That is my, uh, my understanding so, of uh, the no radiation uh, dial. So if it's giving off, I, I have a comment to that. That's an interesting yeah. theory. And, but if you're giving off, if it's giving off that much radiation that a Geiger counter X meters away is going to pick it up and pick up the radiation, you probably have a, a fourth arm and a third testicle already by the yeah. time, you know, like the radi it's the radiation levels that would have to give off would be crazy. Well, Ari, you know the radiomere from, you just from me. Panerai yeah. is called the radiomere. Oh, oh, what are the testicles? What's going on? Man? It's a great theory, me. but it's full of holes. Yes. The biggest <laughs> hole is right here on the like why would they put it on the dial that these divers are not too, that's yeah. like advertisement to your enemy. No, like once they no, kill no, one of these sense. divers, look at the no, bright no, red yeah, yellow sign on your watch. watch. The watch yeah. says no radiation. They'll go, Oh no, these no, morons. No, 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 it makes sense, Tim. Um uh, this was also a topic with the mill spec uh, that we wanted to talk about, but uh, we totally went off off rail. Um, as we do here, as we do. So, so these watches have been issued to military diver, and it was common that yeah. after a mission, the divers gave the watch back, and another diver took the watch. Mm -hmm. So. To have this no radiation uh, sign on the dial makes sense because if a diver knows I'm, I, I need to, uh, to, to remain uh, un, un, uh, invisible, um, okay, then I'm choosing the watch without radiation instead of the other one. Uh, so it makes perfectly sense because these watches have not been connected to the divers. They have been common equipment used by, by several frogmen. I okay, finished my when, case. Once one of the fragments gets shut down, the enemy will know, like, oh, we can no longer we can no longer uh, successfully rely on our yep. Geiger counters to to check for divers because they're just going to be using these no radiation, uh, yep. you know, no radiation watches. Okay, but uh, what what are you watching out for? 
they'll watch out for I don't know what are they what are they diving with. So the whole radiation else. thing is problematic. Like for you to pick up the radiation, you have to be mm -hmm. right in front of them. Given the amount of radiation, hopefully this watch is given off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got to be right in front of them. If they're right, if you're right you in front so? of them, you know what? I can freaking see you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Geiger counters I don't believe are that sensitive. I mean, you'd have to be given off a fair amount of radiation that will kill you pretty mm -hmm. quickly. In my but the radiation opinion. on these old watches was huge. We'll turn you into the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I hear what you're saying, and you know there might be some truth to that. I, I'm not dis disagreeing. I just I, I can't no, no, get my no, mind I'm, around. Yeah, I'm not desperate uh, defending my theory. I, I thought it was a bur brilliant theory, and as usually, it was busted here. So uh, yeah, yeah. I the go to, uh, to bed now because it's 4.30 yeah. and I go bed, uh, in, uh, to bed yeah. crying. So it's no problem. Yeah. yeah, you know what it is. They were just marketing this as some kind of anti... Because it was like Cold War. They were marketing this as some kind of anti anti-communist propaganda. Think, we I all think Tim, know. I think Tim, actually, Tim, I think, Tim, you actually have the answer. It probably is a lot of that, too. Yeah. Probably is that. In it. Right? Because actually, by the way, wrong. I don't know. When I go through New York, almost every building has the sign like this is a bomb shelter that because these those buildings were built during the you know those warnings right like oh there's going to be an atomic war and this building has a, a bomb shelter built in right so you you can go you can take walk through brooklyn and there's at least all these buildings that still have the the bomb shelters in them pretty 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 cool so there you go i think wrap the show that oh yes 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 We're wrapping it up thank you guys oh let's see let's see let's play some of this the og guys. music this is the music tim the OG. I, I love it i i love so this no, music so no more raving yeah. music yeah this is no great, man yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm gonna, I'm gonna take it scoop. We, we, need need it. We, need, we need the invisible Stop. man watch man yeah, we stopped taking real. crack yeah, guys. Hey, hey. hey. Thank you, you everybody, for joining me. Thank you, Conrad, Jonathan. I think that was a really civil and productive debate today. Thank you, REG, Mr. Jim D, Marco. Thank you for coming on. That was that thank was you, pretty fun. And Captain, thank you. Wow, guys. Thank it was you. A man. Hell of a thank day you. at work, but. We made it, guys. That's we it. made it, yes. We're we're going through this day by day. I'm gonna go sleep and then I'm gonna try to bust out a video tomorrow. Good stuff. And I'm gonna try to bust out something else later tonight. Oh jeez. Oh, what are we doing? What? what are we talking about? Jesus I'm not Christ. About anything. That's, not, that's his only fan show. Hell that's man. Captain is eating ste steak for late night. Alright. Good night, everybody. Ooh, his dollar super chat, super chat. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. His one three seven eight five dollars super chat. Great show, Tim. Hey, his. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>